maybe it's not drinkable. It's just like a decoration for you. Oh, great. <laughs> it's real whiskey inside though. I can taste it. So where are we going right now? To the Edinburgh Castle. Yes. Great, great. So we booked the tickets in the rooms, right? Yeah. And now we're just gonna head there. So it's not so far from where we live. And we had a very big breakfast at the hotel because it's unlimited continental food. And darling, how many pieces of bread you had? Just three. And what else did you have? Ah, uh, cereal. And yogurt and fruits yes here we go so guys you can see how big uh, my husband's appetite is Edinburgh is a very hilly city we climb quite a lot of stairs there here we are climbing the stairs to get to the castle Miss Panda dislikes stairs just like Poe hates stairs the so-called Panda asthma finally we reach the Edinburgh castle the castle has played a dominant role in the history of Scotland. You can see various things inside the castle, such as the royal palace, a small medieval chapel, national war museum, and etc. Since we went to Edinburgh over the weekend of Memorial Day, so there are some special events going on that week to commemorate those who dedicated their lives to their country. At noon, we saw the cannon fire. As we wandered the streets in Edinburgh, the sound of bagpipes was carried by the wind and rested in the hearts of the passers-by. It has a certain cathartic feeling. The architecture in Edinburgh captivated our imagination of a distant and glorious past. One thing we noticed in Edinburgh is Scott's obsession with memorials. Sir Walter Scott's monument is the world's second largest monument to a writer. The Scott monument dominates the Edinburgh panorama. The tremendous honour paid to a novelist gives us a glimpse of the deep appreciation of literature in Scotland. Decoration of poppy seeds surrounded the monument. It's a time to remember those who died for their country, also the tremendous value of peace. Standing by the end of a road that leads to the sea, we try to capture the beauty of sunset. Soon night fell, yet our adventure continued. Most bottle of whiskey. Yeah. What 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 does it taste like? Okay, you're gonna open it and drink it and let us know. Mm. It's not coming out. Street part. Yeah, just on the side part. Is it gonna be drunk from? Maybe it's not drinkable, it's just like a decoration for you. Oh, great. <laughs> it's real whiskey inside though, I can taste it. After the unsuccessful attempt of mini whiskey drinking, we entered St. Giles Cathedral and got a small little gift. Alright, so right now we are just taking a look at our souvenir, um, which we got from St. Giles. It's a very beautiful rose on the outside. And what's inside? Darling, would you please open it? Ooh, it's the nativity scene. Yeah, but it's like a miniature style. Everything looks so tiny. Giles has been a working church for almost 900 years. The famous Presbyterian minister John Knox used to preach there during Reformation. We happened to see a rehearsal for the upcoming concert that night.
think about time very fast. Wow. It looks like a grandma. After a quick visit to Greyfriars Cook Yard in the morning, we took a train to Glasgow to meet up with Ian's cousin, a wonderful medical student. When we step out of the train station, immediately we sensed something different in terms of the city's character. Unlike Edinburgh, Glasgow feels more modern and colourful. On the main streets, ubiquitous branded shops were packed with shoppers as usual. Loads and loads of people walked past. The bustling and hustling reminds one of a busy Saturday in any big city. The integration of arts and culture gives the industrial cityscape a distinct warmth and vibrancy. For Ian, the most exciting thing in Glasgow was to visit sites designed by Charles Rainey McIntosh, the renowned Scottish architect whose design sensibility shaped how the city of Glasgow is conceived by the war road. At the Willow Tea Rooms, the curves, dots and geometric shapes showcase some of the prominent artistic choices of the famous architect. After a day trip in Glasgow, we returned to Edinburgh in the evening. Despite the cold weather, we still walked a bit to find a seafood restaurant to celebrate Johnny's season submission. Johnny will never get tired of fish, mussels and shrimps. Sometimes you did extensive research to find a restaurant. Sometimes you just lucked into one. I guess that was our experience that night. Here we were. Mussel Inn Seafood Restaurant. We had an amazing meal. Food delicious, portion generous. Such a satiating meal. So, this is the oh, I guess that's the Prime Minister. Really? Of the person? Yusuf. Yeah. Yeah. That's why there are so many police here. <laughs> Time went by so quickly. The last day in Scotland was the Lord's Day. We returned to St Giles for a morning service. It was a special service for Memorial Day. The sermon was on Micah 4, a message about the demand for collective efforts to make peace in the world. A fitting and hopeful message to today's turbulent and tumultuous world. After a quick lunch, we headed to the train station and stepped off for Oxford. Our wonderful and fruitful Scotland trip came to an end.